Thank you for the invitation. And let me present myself. myself. I'm an experimental physicist, and I have the pleasure um, to co-chair the newly the new committee which has been uh which has been founded in crns and which is called the committee on parity and equity and which is um in addition to the work of the mission for the place of women at crns um, the committee is supposed to make concrete proposals to what can we do uh, so that crns recruits, keeps, and promotes women uh, in the long run. So this is very new. Our first official meeting will be next week. Um, but there is also already a, lar a very vast plan of things to do. And uh, the idea is really not to make a very vague and smoky action plan, but to really say hands-on, what can we do? And I'm happy for any suggestion you might have and any suggestion which come out of this discussion. I will do as Rohini did before starting my very two slides and present our two French speakers. One is Claudine Hermann. I don't think I, for the French of us, I don't have to, to, um, to really present Claudine. But Claudine has been an advocate for women in science for the last few decades. Um, uh, <laughs> she, she has given so much input in uh, in the field, and she has so uh, defending so much um, this subject. I think uh, this is really one of the the pillars of women in science in France, and so we're really happy to have her there. And uh, I have to say, Claudine is a physicist, and in and in to to complement this, uh, there's also Catherine Dargemont, um, who's a biologist. Nobody's perfect. <laughs> No, but um, uh, Catherine, um, since a couple of months, is in charge of international, or how do you say, international counselor uh, to the uh, science director of CNRS, um, and she's she has been active very much in international affairs, and she has a very you will see she has a very pertinent view on women in science from the biologist view, which is a bit different to physics. And so let me. Um, I, I just wanted to introduce very rapidly, but this is these are slides. I think you all know, but just to set the landscape of what we're talking about. Uh, most of you might have seen this slide, which is from the European report, she figures, and which is the scissor paragraph, that we see that um, unto the age of, um, like up to the PhD and its students, this is um, for a Korean academia, and it, it, it concerns all disciplines, this slide, and you see until there, up to there, to PhD, um, figures are very comparable. We have almost as much young men as young women in all disciplines. And then the scissor falls apart starting at postdocs. So this is really, I think this is a really terrible to look at. If you, if you, now if you look, if you see that the blue curve is man, for those who don't see, but maybe you can guess, the blue curve is man and the, <laughs> the yellow curve is women. So you see that the, the partition is really, it goes really far apart. What is, what is even worse? is the landscape in science and technology. Well, we don't start at equity. We start already with a fraction of one third, two thirds um, in students and PhDs, and the scissor falls apart even more, having an average value of around 11, 12, 13 percent uh, um, for full professor positions, uh, for women full professor pos positions. So I think this is really what we want to work on, and I think the, the main point of this round table is to start to work at this position. What can we do um, in order to recruit, to get this, uh, to get this this flexure, downward flexure, starting at postdoc position, so that it will not be as steep a gradient as it's there. And I think the, uh, everything which is before that, how to attract more girls uh, um, to physics or to, well, I say physics, but to science and technology, this is before, and I think this will be discussed in the round table this afternoon. Um, and then my, my other slide is this one, where you see the evolution. So 
what is the temporal evolution of these figures? Do we get better? I mean, it's 25 years we've been talking about it. And Claudine has been talking about this matter more than 25 years. So do we get on? Do we improve? And you see, this is the evolution at CNRS. And already CNRS is an employer which is aware of the problem. So you see this is evolution and you see the evolution in 17 years that has changed by just a few percent. And um, these are figures which are from the report of, um, of CNRS uh, which, make a, which makes a report um, of, of uh, uh, compared situations, gendered. Um, and they made an extrapolation and they said, based on these figures, we can extrapolate that if we have this annual progress of 0.2% uh, uh, of women in science, we could eventually extrapolate to be at parity in 72 years, which maybe is a bit late. And let me show, just to finish, let me show one slide, which is this one. Well, there's a lot of graphs. You, you won't see it. You won't see it in real. In fact, it's the evolution over year of the percentage or the fraction of, of number um, or the variation um, of, um, of women in the different um, categories, be it uh, researchers, engineers, or technicians. So. Um, what you, you don't have to look at the real graphs. You see that they all go come to around a zero here. What you have to look at is the scale. Okay? You see that the scale of this variation, this is really the bad information in that graph. The scale of that variation, first it goes, the gradient it goes down of this, and also the variation is less than a percent. Okay? Do we want to have less than a percent. Do we do all these efforts to make variations of less than a percent, which might be even statistically not significant? So I think there's really work to do. And uh, by this, I think um, there are many good ideas. And let's go and see how our speakers respond. Thank you very much.